All right guys, it's Hannah Eden here. I'm gonna take you guys through a quick mobility and warm up drill. So a lot of people wanna work on range of motion and really wanna work on the mobility. So every day before my workouts, this is something that I go through. So I figured I'd record it for you guys and you guys can join me in this too. So start by going ahead and bringing your feet between hip to shoulder width apart. We're gonna come right down into the base of your squat, making sure that your feet are nice and flat on the floor, bring your chest up nice and high and using the inside of your legs to push your elbows against your legs, opening up your hips. Nice work. Now as we start to activate, start to rock your body weight from side to side. Start breathing. Good, and now place your hands on the floor and raise your hips. Keeping everything nice and loose, start to get in two with your body, leave your legs nice and straight, and hold either hand to your elbow. Rounding up that back, bringing your chin to your chest. Good. Now rather than focusing on your hamstring stretch, let's go ahead and bend your knees. Rounding out that back, imagine trying to touch your forearms on the floor. Breathe, lengthen that spine, decompress. Nice. Now I'm gonna place my hands on the floor. I'm gonna bring my body to the side. I'm gonna find my downward dog position. So my feet are about hip to shoulder width apart. Hands are about shoulder width apart. And now I'm gonna send my head between my shoulders, raising my hips up to the ceiling, creating a V in my hips. Nice. I'm still keeping that weight on the back of my heels and driving the weight into the, the back of my legs. And now start to slowly tread your heels one at a time. So it's toes to start the wake up, your Achilles, your calf muscles, hamstrings. Good, now find that push up plank position. So from here, we're gonna keep our wrists, elbows and shoulders stacked. We're going for external rotation in the shoulders, sucking my belly button in and pressing my hands in through to the ground. External rotation, imagine having a dial in each hand and turning it out to help turn on your shoulders. Legs are straight, feet are back, we're still holding. Stabilizing, breathe, nice work. And now bring your right knee into your chest, round your back out and activate by pulsing your knee forward three times. Three, two, and one. Now I'm gonna kick this foot up to the sky, keeping my hips square, Evenly distributing the weight between my palms and making sure my left heel is flat on the floor without letting my hip twist or get there, I'm going to raise my leg. You can feel it in the left base leg hamstring. Breathe. And now I'm going to switch and I'm going to tilt my body, looking underneath my right armpit, bending at the knee and allowing my body to twist, trying to stack my hips. Good. Take a nice deep breath in. Three, two, one, and now my right foot, I'm gonna to bring to the outside of my right hand. Bringing my chest down up nice and high, and my hips down low. Breathe, good. Trying to extend that back leg entirely, leave your left hand on the floor, bring your right hand up. Reach, stack in those shoulders. Nice, now bring this left hand, right hand, sorry, behind your head, and now we're gonna pump. Elbow to elbow, bring it back up. Elbow to elbow. Bring it back up. Now I'm gonna try and get my elbow to my wrist. Back up, elbow to my wrist, and back up. Hand on the floor, find that downward dog position. Again, and start treading your heels. That's, so we've done it on the right, whatever we do on the right, we're gonna do on the left. So find that push up plank position again. Bring your left knee to your chest now and activate three times. Three, two, one. Hips stay square, right foot is flat on the floor. No twisting, a straight line, even weight in each hand. Sending my head right between my shoulders. Breathe. Three, two, one. Now I'm gonna twist. Looking under my, my left armpit, bending at the left knee. Breathe, allowing the weight of my ankle to open up my hip. Stretch my psoas, like a scorpion right here. Breathe. Three, two, one. Now bring that left foot on the outside of your left hand. Hips down low, chest up nice and high again. Breathe. That back leg is extended, heel is on the floor. Now leave your right hand on the floor, bring your left hand up, reach. Stacking those shoulders, try not to sink into that front shoulder. Reach up, nice. Now again, hand behind your head. Elbow to elbow, twisting that spine. Elbow to elbow, elbow to wrist. Make sure you open up all the way. Elbow to wrist. Open up all the way, and now bring your hand back. Find that downward dog position again. Our shoulders are having to stabilize here so they're getting warmed up. And our hips and our joints, everything's opening up. 
Find that push-up plank position again. Now we're gonna find your beast. Find your six-legged beast. So, wrist, elbows, shoulders are stacked. Knees are underneath me, on the floor, and my toes are tucked. We've got six points right here. Knee underneath my hip, if not slightly in front. Now I'm gonna elevate my knees, bringing my shins parallel to the ground. This is your beast or your bare core position. Suck your belly button in and breathe. Hold it for three, two, one. Now I'm gonna load my beast. Knees stay exactly where they are. I'm gonna drop my butt to my heels. A common mistake is that they come up. Make sure that they stay nice and low. Now I'm too short if I wanted to load my beast. So I'm gonna extend my arms about two to three inches in front of me and now I'm gonna tuck my chin to my chest. Now from here, notice my heels. I want my heels to stay facing to the ceiling. I want my upper body to stay where it is. External rotation. My ears are right between my biceps. And now from here, I'm just going to raise my hips. Good. Now keep your heels up. Keep your head where it is. And drop your knees back to where they began. And now give me five more repetitions. Up. Down. Up. Down. Up. Down. One more. Keep those heels up and down. Now raise your hips, drive your heels into the floor and start to walk your hands in slowly to your feet. Good. Hands opposite elbow. Swing again from side to side. And now come up with every rep. Open up your elbow. Hold it at the top. Getting a little bit higher every time. Good. Till we go all the way. Drop back down, turn around, all the way. Drop back down, turn around. Good stuff. Ah, feeling worked already. Now go ahead and swing your arms from side to side. Try and clap your hands behind your back. Breathing as you go. Good job. Now we're gonna go for some manual resistance. And this is a really good example of what I mean throughout your workouts. I talk about this all the time. I can show you a movement. I can show you where you need to move from point A to point B. But how much effort you put into that rep is up to you. So manual resistance is where you can make nothing feel very heavy, right? So we're gonna do this right now with bicep curls. So bring your arms up by your side, wrist, elbows, and shoulders at the same level, and now I'm gonna squeeze, trying to connect my mind to my body to activate my bicep, even though I have no weight in my hand. We can still engage, connect that right muscle group, and bring it back. So let's go. My body is shaking. It's up to you how hard you wanna make it, but we're trying to flood the upper body with some blood right now. Breathe. Good. And now we're gonna push up above your head like you have two dumbbells for a military press. Press up and then pull it down. Press up and pull it down. Breathe up, pull it down. And now one foot in front of the other, you're stuck somewhere, you're gonna move this big rock out of your way, otherwise you're trapped forever. From here, brace yourself in the bottom, push it forward, and now pull it back. Elbows. Push it forward and pull it back. Push it forward and pull it back. Good. One more thing real quick. We're gonna go over the difference between a hip hinge and a squat, which is gonna help us get our posterior chain, our lower back work. So, feet between hip and shoulder width apart. I'm gonna soften my knees. First thing I'm gonna do with a hip hinge or a deadlift is send my hips behind me like I have a target. Karate chop those hips, boom. Now, I can feel my posterior chain immediately getting engaged, meaning my hamstrings into my glutes into my lower back. It's like a guitar string, I can feel it. At the base, my knees are on top of my ankles, rather than over my knees. My core is engaged, my shoulders are pulled back. My spine is still engaged. It may be straight, but it's at an angle. If I do one thing without the other, if I try and send my head forward without my hips back, I'm gonna round my back. If I try and send my hips back without my head forward, I'm gonna arch my back. So, to keep that metal rod, which is your spine nice and straight, if one goes back, the other has to come forward into a hinging motion. Now from here, I'm gonna drive through my heels, squeeze my abs, and again, hinge back, drive through my heels, squeeze my butt. Hinge back, drive through my heels, squeeze my butt. Now, the difference between that and a squat, squat, I'm gonna go a little bit wider. My hips go back, but then they go down. Driving up through my heels. There's an imaginary seat behind you. Hips go back and down for a squat. Hips go back and forth for a hinge. So let's do one and then the other. One hinge, one squat. One hinge, one squat. One hinge, one squat. Last one, one hinge, 
and one squat. Hopefully you guys are feeling a lot better than you were when you began. Loosen that body up. Preparation for your workouts is key. Get that body primed and prepped for what we're about to do. We do train at a higher intensity. The volume is high, so make sure you recover right and you warm up correctly. Good luck and I'll see you soon.